welcome to Knitting Samurai Plus One, Episode Three. What am I calling it? Mm, heated seats? No more adrenaline? Something along those lines. <laughs> I'm your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. And what else do I have to tell you? Show notes can be found on the blog www.knittingsamuraiplus one blogspot.com and if you're subscribing on iTunes welcome hey how about a star ring I appreciate it and I think that's all I have to say so here we are week episode sorry episode three I am a little bit scattered um, <laughs> you know how they say the first couple of weeks you come home from the hospital with your new newborn and you're running on adrenaline true I can now attest to that being very true. So we are into uh, Roland's fourth week, and it's starting to take its toll. The we had a couple nights with two-hour-long feeding slash I don't want to go back to sleep, <clears throat> and then he was up two hours later, <laughs> wanting to eat again. So that was rough to say the least. But that's. Uh, that's actually why it, it's been so long between recordings because it was like I'm too dead tired today no one wants to listen to me talk so I was waiting for a day when I had some energy and last night he slept from 9 until 2 30 so woohoo and then he went back to sleep at I think 3 and slept until 6 so it was almost a, a uh, it was as close to perfect as we get these days so um, that's what's going on with me. And this morning, I actually ran out to Target to buy some stuff. I had some coupons <laughs> for uh, baby wipes and diapers and things that they were going to expire anyway. So Steve took care of Roland, and I ran out to Target, and I got in the car. It's October 4th. I guess it's a Tuesday. And I got in the car, 8 o'clock in the morning, hit all the school traffic on my way to Target. But it was so cold that I needed to turn on the heated seats. And it's just like, oh my god, time is flying by. Like, how is it so cold out? I need heated seats. I think two weeks ago I was roasting and sleeping with a fan blowing directly on me at night. And now I need the heated seats in the morning. But it is October, and that's the way the weather goes here in lovely rainy New England today. New Hampshire. So... I think that's enough babbling for my part, and we can jump into the knitting. So it's been, I think, eight or nine days, nine or ten days. It's been a few days since I've recorded, and I've actually, we, Steve and I, started um, <clears throat> doing shifts instead of both taking care of Roland all the time. And so the shifts have really, really, really improved my knitting time, because it's like, oh, I've got three hours, spend an hour doing, you know, showering or eating or taking care of something and then have a little bit of knitting and so it's been I've done a lot of knitting as you will see and I am very far from monogamous which as we go on if you're new to the podcast then yeah <laughs> I knit on a lot of things and a lot of things get put aside and then come back months later but excuse me hi that's Linus. He just joined us. <laughs> um, so let's get into some knitting content, shall we? Let's see. First up. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start with this. So I had knit Roland about a bazillion pairs of baby socks. And come to find out, only two pairs fit him. One. Um, so this is the Shibui. No show notes. <laughs> Shibui baby hat and socks from One Skin Wonders. Um, that was the pattern I used that only one pair fit him. So that's knit with sock yarn. And it was the pair I actually made the foot a little longer. And um, like five rows longer. And that one fits him. So the other one that fits him was the um, super quick super quick baby socks that we had done as a knit along in the Expectant Knitter podcast group. Um, so there was a pair uh, in Malabrigo Rios that fit him. 
And so I said, oh well, if those fit him, then I will cast on and knit some more of those along that pattern. Um, so here's the first one that I finished. I cast on and finished this week. It is uh, Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This is her cozy base, which is 100% super wash in the color Sunday's Coming. So I actually had her dye me enough of this to knit a sweater and then some. So I'm going to make him a hat sock sweater set. So there's the first sock for his ginormous feet. So, and after I finished that sock, I didn't want to knit a second one right away. Um, and I have decided that they're going to be sort of mismatchy. So the... I'm at the purple, so the next one's going to start with the purple, in case you were curious how that's going to work. Um, so I started in a second sock, but in a different color, and I'll go back and, you know, go back and forth, and it'll keep it a little more exciting. I have no idea what this yarn is. It's, um, I'm going to guess it's some kind of wool, cotton, wool something blend, although it feels like just wool, the way it's dyed. Um, can you see Linus? He's over here jumping around next to me. Um, the way it's dyed, or maybe it's hand spun? I don't know. It looks like a barber pole effect to me. Anyways, and so that's like a baby blue and a baby green. The light is not great in here today because it's raining. But, um, <clears throat> so I just started on the cuff. And I'll knit him a pair of those too. So, I, it's funny. I, I, when I was pregnant, I was like, oh, we're going to need all these socks and all these um, hats and all kinds of things to keep them warm. It actually turns out that unlike adults, babies don't need to change their socks and their hats every day. <laughs> you know, like he can wear the same pair of socks for three or four days and they're not going to get dirty as long as they always come off before he gets changed. Steve uh, figured that out very early on that the kicking legs, hitting into the diaper and the whole lower groin area. Yeah, the socks need to come off for the day for change. But anyway, so that's, I've been working on those socks. And then you've seen me knitting socks for Steve before. Um, and these are just very simple. I didn't, I talked about them, but I didn't show them last week. These are um, a four by four rib in the Souls and More yarn. Um, Oh god, I don't know the colorway. I think it's like shades of gray. They call it. Nope. It's color 1810, which is like a Fair Isle effect color. Just a simple 4x4 rib. I'm knitting them on size US size 1 needles, which is usually I use one and a half, 1.5 needles, so this is small for me. But they're very dense and they're gonna be super warm and Past, I've turned the heel and I'm working up the leg and this is just um, it, it's based on Wendy Johnson's sock gusset gusseted sock it'll be in the show notes what I base it on for the, basically for the heel construction and how to do that for toe up sock so working on that this actually sits by the feeding chair and if he falls asleep on me I'll reach down and grab it and do a few rows. Um, and then I have a lot of buttons on my bag too. This is a Lantern Moon bag. It's one of my favorite project bags. And I've been accumulating buttons on it. So, including the Bobcats. They're a very funny online cartoon that hubby reads. So, um, how about something that's not a sock? Last week I showed you that, or I talked about knitting a uh, Rainbow Marley hat out of one color for, I don't know if it's called Rainbow Marley, maybe it's just called Marley Hat. It's a Susan B. Anderson pattern, link in the show notes. Um, and I had knit Roland one before, and he's been wearing that like nonstop, almost anyways, since he's been, since we left the hospital, he wore it at the hospital and he's still wearing it now. But I really like that hat. I really like the bits on the top. So I pulled out some heavyweight socks that rock and decided to do a solid color one. So that, well, variegated single yarn, not solid color, single yarn. Um, so this is the farmhouse colorway. I got it at Rhinebeck a couple of years ago. I, so there are rows of 
seed stitch and then pearl rose in there and it has a nice rolled brim and a little boom of it up at the top. Uh, I finished it and showed it to Steve and he was like, hey, can you make me one? And I was like, seriously, with this stuff on top, you would you would wear that? He was like, well, no, but I like the color. So I really like the color too. It's a great, um, it's like dark navy and sage green and a little bit of gold and fuchsia. And then there's some orange and other colors where those mix, but it's really pretty. It doesn't fit him right now. I knit the baby size, but it's still big for him. I don't know. What the heck? Because some of the hats I had previously knit in the baby size, they fit him now. And some of the newborn ones are, like, super tight. So, <sighs> yeah. But he will eventually wear this. So, finished hat. Um, what else do I have to show you? I'm just pulling out of the stack of projects sitting here next to me. Uh, the Rhinebeck sweater, which is, I'm calling it the Rhinebeck sweater. It's the Melrose Peacoat by Cicely Glowick McDonald. I finished my right front panel. So I'm hoping, I was hoping to have this done in time for Rhinebeck. Not ever, not going to happen at all. But, um, I'm picking away at this. This is my car ride knitting, basically. So here's the front, the right front panel. I have seed stitch over here and then stockinette over there. Um, yeah, it, it's fine. It's I'm not in love with the pattern. I'm not like, oh my god, I have to knit it, but it's fine. I'm, I'm working my way through it. You know, it'll be a slower project that I just sort of chug away on, chip away at, whatever. Uh, so when I finished the right side, I started the left. I am using size US 10, which I think is a 6.0 millimeter needle, and Cascade Eco Plus yarn. So here's the other side. You can see I've done the seed stitch border at the bottom, and I'm starting up the front with seed stitch border on the side, and then stockinette stitch over here. So that's coming along. Nice navy blue sweater. I think I will do the sleeves next in case you were wondering, where will she go from here? She's done the right, she's done the left. Where, what will be next? Yeah, I think it'll be the sleeves. Saving that monotonous bit of stockinette that is the back panel for last. Although it has a flower, like a seed stitch flower motif on the upper chest, like the shoulders, upper chest, upper back, like the shoulder area. So it won't be that monotonous. Like I'm sure you start at the bottom and go up and about the time you get bored with the stockinette, it'll be time to start the pattern. So, anyways, that is also coming along slow, oh, but it's coming. I'm not much of a sweater knitter in general. I'm way more <laughs> of a um, sock, shawl, that type of stuff. So, but I have no shawls with my heels. Just a lot of socks right now. I think it's because what I'm knitting, I have to be able to throw down and move on or pick up a baby or whatever so it can't be too intense with charts and stuff but yeah this is a sock blocker and this excuse me is a finished sock with an afterthought heel so i'm using 1.5 millimeter no 1.5 us needles for this and the yarn is three use twisted in fiber. You'll look great in stripes in the Harry Potter colorway. And it is my first attempt at an afterthought heel. So, I think I talked about the heel last week, but I wasn't wild about it. Yeah, so I finished the leg. It's about, yay, this much too long for me. Like a half an inch. Well, that's more like an inch too long. Um... I'm torn right now. I've cast on and started the other one. I am so far along. Holy cow. I am torn if it's more important to make them both a little long, but keep the same striping sequence. Like, you know, because I started the afterthought heel right here in the yellow section, so ideally I would start it here in the pink if I wanted it to fit completely perfectly. Um, my socks have to match. Like, I am a little like, ah, I have to match. 
and be perfect and I've been known to do crazy things to get them to match um, so I don't think I'd be able to handle that with them not matching it's especially in something as bold as this you know like it will be noticeable that the stripes are off and I really like how this turned out and that it's teal up here and teal down here yeah so we'll see I'm probably just gonna make them a little big and wear them and wash them and hope that they shrink down a little with time maybe felt up a little I mean a lot of my socks the more I wear them the smaller tighter they get and then I give them to my mom who's a size smaller I'm an 11 she's a 10 so she can wear them give them a second life if you will for a while with some of them specifically the uh, silk wool blends or the bamboo wool blends those don't work out for me as well as wool nylon yeah so uh finished off yay finished off <laughs> so yeah and as i showed you i'm just starting on the toe i have a ton of yarn left for this though like this was my first skein and i wear size 11 like that is not a small sock right i split the skein in half initially and this was for the first sock and there's still a boatload left there so I'm working off that uh, yeah so three use has generous skeins I would say just looking it doesn't say oh 440 yards yeah that's that's a lot I think I'm around 380 because I don't like super tall socks but yeah um, if you watch the podcast, Knitting on the Fly with Katie, she is doing a drive right now for, what is that, Shaken Baby Syndrome? Does it have another name? I don't know. It's like Click for, for Babies, I think. Anyway, she's doing a drive for Purple Hats, and she's trying to, Baby Hats, to help raise awareness. Um, and she is looking to gather them all together by October 15th. So if you have some baby friendly purple yarn laying around, whip out a couple hats. It would really help and it would make her feel really good. So I, um, started a hat as well. I mean, I've been knitting hats for my own baby. Why can't I knit a couple hats for someone else? So I am using Plymouth Yarn Dream Baby DK, which is a 50-50 acrylic microfiber nylon blend is very soft um, knitting on US size fives and this is the Allison Williams simple baby hat just my standard go-to pattern um, I'm knitting the newborn size and we'll see how much I have left after that I'll weigh this and weigh the hat and see if I have enough to make a larger one or the same size so I'm gonna make two and send them off to Katie hopefully by the 15th so that is also on the needles. I think I want to do a little bit of um, feral flecking or something. What the heck, Linus? I'm sorry. He ugh. he pulled the string off my pants and was sitting there chewing it. Yuck. And now I have wet, ugh, wet string with cat chewing this on it. Linus, you're just silly. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Blats <laughs> for babies. Um, what else? Yeah, see, I told you, this is insane. I am knitting so many things right now. Um, I pulled out the meandering circles. Socks. I pulled these out of hibernation. Another three used twisted in fiber color. Uh, this is the Tweedles self striping. So this was from Alice in Wonderland. It has this like fire red. It's such a hot, fun red. And then the the muted auburn, auburn, golden, butternut. I don't know, whatever that is, that color, tan, if you will. And then a really deep royal blue color. And they're so, oh, this yarn is so soft and squishy. It's a, um, is it an 80-20? Nope, 75-25 Super Merino nylon yarn. Um, yeah, so this is the Meandering Circle Sock. I had been working on this during the, um, 
hockey playoffs last year. Every time we lis watched, listened to the Bruins, I would be like, okay, I'll work on this. And, um, and then I put them aside. But the other day I needed to grab something and all of the socks were upstairs. And uh, so I just pulled something out of the closet that I knew I could quickly pick up and keep going because the pattern is dead simple and gives you a lot of bang for your buck. So I really like that zigzag shaping that you get across the top of the foot. So I've done an that of course I converted it to toe up. Done an, a regular heel that I like. Slip stitch heel flap. There we go. And then I was, when I picked it back up, I was in the blue section. So I would say I've knit about two inches this week on this. So um, another, well let's see. I always figure out the length of my leg by folding the sock in half along the heel flap and then I like the, the length of the leg part of the sock to match the length of the foot part of the sock. So I would say I have another two inches to go before I start the ribbing. So this is the first sock out of the pair. So again, I split the yarn into two and that's how much I've used so far. Like they were the same size going into it. So very generous, but yes. And it's in my pit loop bag. My little square pit loop bag. That's very red and pink and orange and colorful and makes me smile. So, yeah. So there's that sock. And then I think I saved the best for last. So I have been working on the Veritas, which is a uh, color work cowl and matching fingerless mitts. I finished one of the mitts, you've seen it, and I started the cowl itself. So here is this, yeah, see, I've done a lot. Aren't you impressed? I totally am. That's how much I have so far. So I have approximately six rows to go, and then I start the brown ribbing again. As I was knitting, actually, I can show you right now because I'm magic looping it, and I have giant loops giant needles. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. It's tight. That's going to destroy my hair. You guys don't care, do you? You'd rather see it on me. All right. Ah! It's the ponytail and the bobby pins. Okay. Oh my God. Maybe I'll just wear it for the rest of the show. <laughs> so as I was going along knitting this, I got to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I was into the ninth color block. I hit nine out of 12. Yeah, nine out of 12. And I realized that when I wear this thing, it's like, it's very, it's long, right? Like I don't have some sort of stretchy, super long neck. This is irritating. Um, you know, maybe I have a short neck. Maybe other people have longer necks than I do, but here, I'll show you the uh, picture on the model. It's definitely looser on her, looser, yeah, than it is on me. <clears throat> and if I'm doing all this work with color work, I don't want it all bunched up and then no one can ever see it, right? So I decided that... <clears throat> And I had a similar problem with the fingerless mitts that I knit the largest size and then went up, added stitches, and they ju just fit me. Like, I don't know who this designer is, but they're very petite. Actually, I do know who this designer is. Teresa Chenoweth. Anyways, the sizes, the uh, large size is very, very petite. So this is 140 stitches around knit on size 4 needles needles. Well, maybe that's why. This is why it's important to read things carefully. <laughs> U.S. size 6 and 7, 4 and 4.5 millimeter needles. I read the 4. So I've been using 3s and 4s. Ah! Ah! Why it's 
so dense. Oh my god, it's so dense. And I thought it was weird when I got the yarn and I read the tag. It's like it's knit on sevens and they're telling me to use size fours. Like, ah, oh, banging head against the wall. That's crazy. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> And I started this before I had Roland, so really I should have been like not sleep deprived and stupid. Well, I mean, <laughs> that explains. Oh, I'm sorry, Teresa Chenoweth. I there's nothing wrong with your Veritas pattern. I absolutely love it. <laughs> User error. Um. <laughs> okay, so. I got to the ninth repeat, realized that this thing was super fitted, not at all drapey, and like it's going to stop where my shoulders start and roll. Like it wasn't going to work. So when I got to the ninth one, I'm going to take it off. Oh, it's warm. <clears throat> I decided that I would make it um, split instead of being a tube all the way and treat it like a... Um, sort of like the construction of a placket on a um, polo shirt. So it would split open there and I would have two nice finished edges and then I could like put that over a shoulder or to the back and it would make it lay a little more onto my chest and shoulders instead of trying to squeeze this whole tube around my neck which is not super long and if it had been on the right size needle it would be way looser. And more anyway. So I started doing that, and you can see right here, I made the um, five edge stitches, what I, is now my edge. I made those seed stitch so that it won't curl up on me, and I'm going to do the last two color sections, so about an inch and a half of the color work in, with that, with seed stitch, and then the last 12 rows of ribbing, which is a three by two through by two ribbing and um, I won't do seed stitch on that edge I'll just do the ripping on that edge when I get to that part so oh my god I'm sorry I'm still in shock about the wrong needle size that's crazy Stephanie that's crazy <sighs> yeah it really does say that and so when it says with smaller needles oh I'm using a four I guess smaller needles is three Anyways, so it'll it'll spread a little bit here, and that'll be give me a little bit of ease in on this. So it's going along. I'm sorry. I have I'm like speechless about this right now, and I think I have I'm gonna say three hours left on this, and I've probably put in twenty five. So I'm not ripping back or starting new or any of that junk we'll just carry on but I will say that I have seriously enjoyed doing the color work so in the past I've done a pair of mittens that had a cat on them and I did a feral vest which was a I think a year-long project it was no, no, it was Thanksgiving to July, like August time. Um, I did that, which was the Ivy League vest by Uni Jang. I loved it. I did it in the pattern colors. And when I was done, you know, the sad story. It didn't fit. <laughs> but uh, it, so it sits in my closet waiting for it. Someday, maybe. Because unlike Leslie, I'm not giving that away. That was way too much work. So... Anyway, so this is like my third, well no, because I did a, a bag for my mom too, a felted bag um, that was color work. Third or fourth color work project, depending on how you want to count it, stranded color work following charts. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it so much, in fact, that it made me say, I want to knit something for Roland. That's like uh, a yoked, ferrile. I guess it's Fair Isle if it uses traditional colors, and I'm not using traditional colors, so I would say a yoke-stranded top-down sweater, pullover sweater for him. 
So I have been doing a little online research looking for patterns. I actually went to Elizabeth Zimmerman's, um, yes, that's my name, <laughs> Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitting Around, thinking I would use, I think it's called the percentage sweater. There's one where you measure the chest and then you do a whole bunch of math. I didn't want to do a whole bunch of math. So I'm not using that. I'm, I think I'm going to combine two patterns. I'll link them in the show notes. Um, one is for the construction of the top down, but it has sheep as the design on the chest. I don't like that. I want like the snowflakes, stars, you know, traditional. What I think of as traditional stuff. Anyways, so I'm going to take the chart from another, another sweater and combine it with the instructions for yeah, the one with sheep. I don't want sheep. And so I went, I took the boys and we went to a yarn shop on Saturday. I actually was like, hey, let's practice leaving the house. <laughs> we don't have to, like, let's go off for a fun gallivant. So we fed him, dressed him, threw him in the car, and drove an hour and a half to Center Harbor to Pattern Works. It's, it's a good size yarn shop in, I don't know, it's near Lake Woodenpasaki in New Hampshire. Anyways, so we drove up there and we were within 10 minutes of the shop and he went off. Just like inconsolable, starving, feed me right now. So we pulled off the side of the road, fed rolling. Okay, he's good. Let's go. So we drive to the yarn shop, get there. Oh, well, he needs a diaper change now. So I changed his diaper. Okay, Steve agrees. He'll sit in the car, hang out with Roland while I run into the yarn shop. I say I'll take about 20 minutes. It won't be any big thing. Like, yay, this is our outing. But I also know that if Roland gets upset, he doesn't like the car seat for some reason. Like, we're hoping once we take out the infant insert, he'll be more pleased with it. Because it just seems like he's so shoved up into it. And I know that they say... Um, the car seat is through 11 pounds, and he's got to be close to 10 by now. Um, yeah, so he's probably very close to too big for it. So we'll be taking it out shortly, if not this week, next week. And hopefully he'll like the car seat more. So I run into the shop, and I'm going around, <clears throat> around and around and around. It's in, it's in a shopping plaza. But the feel of the shop itself, you feel like you're in like the downstairs of an old house because it's one room off of another room off of another room and it makes a big circle. And they have the room separated by weight, yarn weight. I love it. If I had a yarn shop, I would totally organize it like that. So <clears throat> I went around, I think, three times because I was just like, okay, I need yarn for a fair isle sweater. I need yarn for a purple hat for Katie. And I need anything else that catches my eye, right? It turns out when you're nervous that your husband's getting annoyed out in the car um, dealing with a crying baby, that that is not the best time to go yarn shopping and enjoy yourself. Who knew? <laughs> so I ended up, sorry for the crinkle, picking out um, Breton, Patternworks Breton yarn. It's their yarn brand. It's um, machine washable, which is what I was looking for, and it is a, they say, it doesn't say, um, it says needle size 6 or 7. I'm going to call it a very light worsted, almost DK, which I thought would work out well for stranded work, um, because that's what <laughs> the cowl is supposed to be. So it's going to be a super warm sweater. So this is the deep forest green. This is a nice taupe color. This is a light, light um, asparagus green. And then this one is sort of a euchre color. Ecker? Ecker. And then a cream. So I got five colors. I'm not sure if I will use all five. But the um, dark forest green is going to be the base. And that's what I bought. So. I actually got three of the forest green, so it's you know, it's not too scratchy. I think it'll be really nice to work with. Um, they call this a heather. Yeah, slightly heathered, but 
Anyways, dark green. I'm sorry. The light is awful. You probably can't even see that. But, um, so I got that yarn. I think I figured out what I want for the patterns. And then, because, you know, you've got your cute little baby. I can totally picture him wearing this ideal sweater in my head. And then I was reading some more in the baby books. You know, learning this, that, and the other. And he spits up a lot. And spitting up doesn't go away until most babies are a year old. So with that in mind, I am going to knit like the one and a half size because I'll tell you my reasoning. He was born in September. So one year in September, he's not going to wear a heavy farewell sweater in September. And he's sort of big for his age. So that means that the one year size, he's not sort of big for his age. He is big for his age. He's in the 95th percentile. So knitting the one year size he would probably be in it <coughs> in the middle of the summer so I'm thinking if I knit like a year and a half size that would fit him at about the right time year and a half 18 months to two year size so that's what I'm going to shoot for so I can't cast that on until I finish my color work project over here with the uh, cowl the Veritas so once the Veritas is finished that is going on the needles it, I might start it a little early I don't know. I'm really excited about working on it. So, uh, we'll see how long I make it. And I usually have segments, but I'm so scattered and no show notes. So that would have been like what's coming up next, but it's not. So let's also talk about new things. Uh, my friend Joan, who is beachy knitter over on Ravelry, knit this for Roland. Oh my god, it is so stinking cute. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Joan. Um, I have no idea what the pattern is, but it has little sideways cables on it. And she sent me the leftover yarn, which is Lorna's, Lorna's Worsted in the color denim. It is so cute. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to put it on Roland. And look, that would totally fit his giant head how cute it is don't you just love it i love it with all the cables oh, so sweet thank you so much joan it's adorable so <clears throat> got this this week i think it's i'm gonna guess that that's like nine month size i mean i could put it on him now but those sleeves are gonna be huge so we'll see we'll see how soon he can wear this it's so cute it's so cute <laughs> So Joan sent us this, and other than my new yarn and that sweater, I don't have anything else new, but I do have um, a book that our pediatrician gave us, which is Your Baby's First Year. Highly recommend this book. It has a ton of information and diagrams and drawings and lots of information that, um, I don't know, it's easier to digest. I think it's the way it's written that it's like in weeks one through four, this is what you can expect to happen. In months for a one month to a three month old, this is what you can expect to happen because, you know, not all babies are on the same timeline. So this has been my uh, sleeping baby, only one arm free. Okay, I'll read since I can't knit. So um, yeah, really like this book. You should get a copy if you're expecting or if you have a newborn, or I don't know, if you're a grandma who wants to know about <laughs> Although if you're a grandma, you've probably already been through it all. Not probably, you definitely have been through it all. But um, anyways, so that's what I have for you this week. Yeah, and it's raining and I'm, uh, I don't wear a watch, but if I did, I would be noting that I think I have like an hour left on my shift. So I will try and edit this and get it up for you as soon as possible and record again next week. Maybe I'll have less on the needles by then. Maybe I'll finish some things off. We'll see how that goes. Until then, I hope you enjoy all your knitting time and have a great one. Bye. Oh, hey, karate did I, moves. I tell you that we had a nighttime peeing incident. Did you notice there's a different blanket in the changing table? I did notice. What happened? I turned around to see him, like he never does this when you're changing him because he's always like 
either get his legs tucked up next to him or he's got him like out straight, you know, kicked out like that, making it very hard to put on his diaper. I turn around and he's going like this. <laughs> That's funny, Roland. Why are you being so co-op? Oh no! <laughs> Why are you peeing on daddy? He's not peeing on me. He's oh, peeing good. at me. 